For 13 wild and wonderful weeks every autumn, college football is a national party in pads. A struggle for success and achievement. Out of more than 10,000 young men who compete each Saturday, only 24 will be selected by the game's coaches as the very best. Not only are these special few honored as a cut above the rest, but they join many of the most respected heroes in the long and storied history of college football. defense when building a winner. That's the cry of those who know football. The 1988 All-American defensive line, Mark Messner of Michigan, Bill Hawkins of Miami, Tracy Rocker of Auburn, Roderick Thomas of Nebraska, and Derek Thomas of Alabama. Number 60, Mark Messner, spent more time in enemy backfields than any other player in Michigan history. Throughout his career, Messner has tackled opponents for lost yardage that would total the length of seven football fields. His greeting to blockers and runners is similar, unpleasant. The defensive foundation of the Wolverines Big Ten Championship team, Mark Messner of Michigan. Finishing his third season as a Miami starter with a flourish, Bill Hawkins, number 54, has helped keep the Hurricanes near the top of the national polls. Consistency is his strong suit, says coach Jimmy Johnson, as Hawkins follows in the footsteps of former Kodak All-Americans Jerome Brown and Danny Stubbs, all one-man wrecking crews of a hurricane force defense. Number 74 is Tracy Rocker, the heart and soul of the stingiest defense in America. Tracy Rocker's been a starter for us for four years. And uh, he's been the type of player that, that uh, nobody just lines up and runs at him. And if they do, they're subject to have a bad play. The Rock could fill a scrapbook with opponents' bad plays, like quarterbacks who get sacked. And that's probably the biggest thing about the whole position is sacking a quarterback. And I think that's the jaw of every football game, to see someone sack the quarterback. And I mean, that's just, that's Hollywood to me. Hollywood to some is pain to others. With Tracy Rocker as the iron-willed anchor, Auburn featured a defense that allowed less than seven points a game. From the kickoff classic in late August, through a November victory over Oklahoma, Broderick Thomas, number 89, stood out front as Nebraska's impact player. Coach Tom Osborne calls him the best at his position ever at Nebraska. As the Cornhuskers pounded their way through an NCAA record 27th consecutive winning season, Thomas dominated, disrupted, and destroyed anyone in his way. Derek Thomas of Alabama single-handedly demolished Penn State's offense. But that was just one of many great games for Thomas, according to coach Bill Curry. Derek's the best lineman I've seen in college football this year. He is the best football player on our team. 
He practices like an All-American every day. It's not something that he just turns on on Saturday afternoons. And in fact, I've never known a truly great player that didn't practice that way. And when he does that, the team tends to rise to his level of performance. A level of performance that gained Derek Thomas a berth on the coach's 1988 All-American defensive line. Backing that fearsome five are linebackers Jerry Osofsky of Pittsburgh and Britt Hager of Texas. When the eyes of Texas senior Britt Hager found a target, the body followed swiftly and punishingly. Number 60 was credited with more than 500 tackles during his brilliant three years as a Longhorn starter. Very few opponents could escape the rocket-like charge of Britt Hager. The arms of Hager, who pushes him all the way down inside the 15-yard line. Hager drilled him right before he got to the goal line, and he hit and stopped. Pairing with Hager behind the line is Pitt senior Jerry Olsofsky, number 55 who often relied on the R.H. factor. When I was coming here, that one coach told me, yo, you gotta have the R.H. factor. That's a run and hit factor. You gotta be able to run somewhere and then hit somebody when you get there. Olsofsky turned his quick reactions into blazing tackles, gaining more than 100 stops in each of his sophomore, junior, and senior seasons. Jerry Osofsky and Britt Hager, 1988 All-American linebackers. In the secondary, the coaches honored Florida's Lewis Oliver, UCLA's Darrell Henley, Clemson's Donnell Wolford, and Florida State's Deion Sanders. Florida's Lewis Oliver is a competitor, no matter what sport he plays. Oh, I love to play, you know, anytime I'm playing anything, you know, I like to compete. And, you know, I don't like to lose, so I just try my best to just win. Coach Galen Hall says he has never been around a back who can read a quarterback and anticipate where the ball will be thrown as well as Lewis Oliver. Famous for his take-no-prisoners tackling, Lewis Oliver covers the field with a style and class that makes him one of the best in all of college football. Twice in 1988, UCLA's Darrell Henley returned punts for touchdowns. Twisting and gliding through frustrated tacklers, he is the Bruins' all-time punt return champion. Filled with an instinct for the football, Henley hits with authority and thrives on damaging an opponent by creating costly turnovers. He then reveals the speed that made him an outstanding track star and running back in high school. Whenever something is happening in the UCLA secondary, it seems Darrell Henley is always involved. He is one aggressive Bruin who can beat you in many, many ways. Following their selection at the end of the regular season, each player is invited to join his fellow All-Americans on an exciting, fun-filled weekend. Here, young men who normally tackle each other get an opportunity to meet, exchange autographs, and take some snapshots. A year ago, Donnell Wolford of Clemson enjoyed this camaraderie and his outstanding play in 1988 makes him one of two returning Kodak All-Americans. In four Clemson games this season, Wolford completely shut out all receivers in his area, not allowing a pass completion. Whether pounding a receiver or galloping through the enemy with a return, Donnell Wolford is a big reason Clemson won its third straight ACC championship in 1988. Wolford shares recognition as a two-time coaches All-American with the man they call prime time, Deion Sanders of Florida State, baseball player, track superstar, and gridiron All-American.
I'm in the spotlight. Everybody's looking at me. When that ball goes off that corner's foot, you know, I'm just back there talking. It's going back, it's going back, it's going back, baby. And when I break a long one like I did, that just kills them. That just really kills them. I'm Dion Sonny, should know my name. But if you don't, then I'm not to blame. I got real class speed with Moose Spout. You throw him out, well, you know I'll be there. You see, I play my best when the game on the line. I guess that's why they call me practice. I'm called me cocky, and I know that. But this I got to do. Right up the middle, makes a nice cut. Dion Sanders to the 50. Dion Sanders to the 40. Dion Sanders hurdles to the 30, to the 20. Dion Sanders will score a seminal touchdown. If he's on the line of scrimmage, he'll kick him out. Coaches like to say that playing on the offensive line is 20% ability and 80% pride. Five young men combined those qualities best in 1988. Anthony Phillips of Oklahoma. Tony Mandarich of Michigan State. Mike Utley of Washington State. Steve Wisniewski of Penn State. And Mark Stepnoski of Pitt. I think, you know, people in Pittsburgh and people who associate with the Pitt football program are very proud of the offensive line tradition here. And I feel that by just doing everything I can to make myself a better player, I can uphold that tradition and try and keep it going. Not only has Mark Stepnoski embellished a tradition of excellence in the offensive line, but off the field he excels in the classroom. A communications major, Mark Stepnoski is one of several All-Americans who epitomize the well-rounded college athlete seeking success both with playbooks and school books. Oklahoma's Anthony Phillips is, yes, the major force behind the Sooners' devastating ground attack, but even more impressive, he is the only four-time selection ever on the Big 8 All-Academic Team. A business management major, Phillips is proud of his hard-earned accomplishments off the field, as well as his achievements on the field. The man in the circle could be called a chef. He is Tony Mandarich of Michigan State. And each time he dominates a defender, they call it a Mandarich meal. At 6'6", 315 pounds, Tony Mandarich is the biggest of an all-American line that averages nearly 290 pounds per man. Point of attack blocking by Mike Utley, number 60, helped Washington State smash the school record for total offense. Utley proved the leader in the trenches during his four years as a starter. In this, his final season, Utley helped the Cougars gain a berth in the Aloha Bowl and a ranking among the nation's top teams. Long, grueling hours of dedication in the weight room helped Steve Wisniewski become an awesome blocker. Yeah, I've always been interested in uh, weight training. It's been more of a hobby than anything else. I started because I thought it would help me in football, and then it worked into a hobby, and that's why I enjoy it now. And if you really want to work at it, you know, the sky's the limit as far as how much you can grow and how much it'll help you in your football career. A marketing major who works hard both on the field and in the classroom, Steve Wisniewski rounds out the coach's all-senior, all-American offensive line. Driving kickoffs completely out of the end zone is one major reason Arkansas senior Kendall Trainer gained the coach's honor as the All-American place kicker. Trainer set a Southwest Conference single season field goal record in 1988 and powered the Razorbacks to the conference championship. Pat Thompson of Brigham Young commanded national attention with his long, spiraling punts. He averaged 
nearly 45 yards a kick and is honored as the leading punter in college football. The receivers on this year's All-America team are Marv Cook of Iowa, Eric Affholder of Southern Cal, and Jason Phillips of Houston. As the top tight end in college football, massive Marv Cook is a dream target. Defenders simply bounce off this 243-pound senior who runs like a fullback. It's like trying to stop a tank with speed. When fans say the Hawkeye offense is cooking, they mean it's touchdown time for Iowa senior Marv Cook. When the Trojans of Southern Cal looked for a clutch catch, they found number 42, Eric Affholder, a 6'1 senior who refused to be intimidated by the helmet rocking hits of the secondary. Affholder's 1988 accomplishments made him USC's all time leading pass catcher. He mastered the miracle catch and won acclaim by the coaches as one of the two best wideouts in college football. The other is a cougar who his friends call a smurf. Only 5'9", Jason Phillips of Houston has learned to play catch with the big boys. No one in the history of the Southwest Conference has caught more career passes than Phillips. And he is the first receiver in more than 20 years to lead all of college football and receptions two years in a row. College football fans in Georgia know a game breaker when they see one. First, there was the legendary Herschel Walker. Now, a legend in the making named Tim Worley. Strength, size, and speed characterize this 216-pound junior who has proved to be one serious bulldog with blast. Southeastern Conference Offensive Player of the Week three times this season, Tim Worley, averaged 10 points a game, including a coast-to-coast 93-yard -coast kickoff return. Shooting through groping tacklers, Tim Worley is college football's 38th special, a brilliant All-American runner and without a doubt, top dog in Georgia. At Oklahoma State, Barry Sanders entered 1988 as the best runner you never heard of. But after he exploded to the top of college football in rushing, scoring, and all-purpose running, he quickly became a household name. Sanders is the first runner ever to have more than one 300-yard game. He had three in one season. He scored more touchdowns, and more total points in a season than anyone ever. He says, when I see a hole in the line, it's like I've been hungry for a week and the end zone is my food. His incredible performance of 1988 will certainly go down in history as the finest single season of any runner in 120 years of college football. Barry Sanders proved to be an Oklahoma State Cowboy who rides for the end zone every time he saddles up. Tim Worley, 
and Barry Sanders, all American runners. While the runners provided the rhythm of 1988, the quarterbacks hit most of the high notes. No defense was safe when Steve Taylor worked his magic, taking Nebraska to the Big Eight title. Long bombs and big victories made Troy Aikman the top passer in UCLA history. Steve Walsh threw more touchdown passes in 1988 than any other Miami quarterback and sophomore Major Harris gunned West Virginia to its first perfect season in 97 years of football. But Rodney Peet, the Southern Cal senior with the quick feet and the laser arm, is the coach's choice as the top quarterback of 1988. A super athlete who can fire from the pocket or buy time with his uncanny mobility, Pete uses this all-around talent to also play third base on the Trojan baseball team. USC's all-time total offense leader, Pete holds 16 school records for passing and total yards. climbed out of a sickbed after a bout with the measles to lead the Trojans to a much heralded triumph over UCLA for the Pac-10 championship. Topping off this honored squad, the coaches named Rodney 1988 All-America quarterback. But to his teammates, he will always be simply Sweet Pete. Once again, the 1988 All-America team. As president of the American Football Coaches Association, I speak for our more than 5,700 members in thanking Eastman Kodak for making this program possible. The Coaches Association is dedicated to maintaining the highest possible standards in both the game of football and the coaching profession. The coaches share a desire for excellence with corporations like Eastman Kodak. From the images we coaches view, to the x-rays in the trainer's rooms, to the cameras and films you fans take to the games, Kodak has always played a major role in the tremendous popularity of college football. We are certainly proud to be a part of that great tradition. Official airline of the 1988 Kodak All-America football team. At Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. 